Now for some additional analysis on that game, let's set it down to Zyrena the Telestrator to break down one of those team fights. Thank you, Freak. I'm forever alone here at the Telestrator. I gave the Lover Boys some time. They'll have a room later on. But I want to bring up a replay here. This is one of the team fights Jat was talking about where if C9, if it had just been executed a little bit better, they could have actually had a little bit of a better lead. It would have been a little bit closer. So as we take a look at this one, 21 minutes in, it ends up being a four for three. And what you need to note at the start of this is Malphite Ultimate is down. It was used to kill Rainover only. High, he's going to run himself a little bit out of mana here as the play continues. And then he doesn't have enough for a headbutt pulverized combo in the middle of it. So let's start this clip off and keep those two things in mind. Balls, no ultimate. High, he's retreating. Boom, there goes all of his mana. He no longer has enough to actually use a headbutt pulverized combo, and now they focus on him. Jensen, they jump onto him. He goes down. High has all these stacks in him, and he gets picked up off on the side. C9 is buying time for Rush, though, and Sneaky with a nice juke there after the fourth shot for the bonus movement speed. And then, boom, because Vault was used, nobody can stop Sneaky inside of his ultimate, and he's able to throw out these shots, pick up Huni, and then this crucial moment that comes up right here. Sneaky he still has flash available to him. But his options are, do I attempt this flash? Is that enough distance to actually get over that wall and to position yourself here to be a threat to Poe Belter and Wild Turtle and clean up this fight? If he flashes this way, then he has to come back in onto Poe Belter and it ends up being a much harder route to actually execute on. So Sneaky had this option available to him, but instead he eats the laser. And as we continue to roll this clip out, you're going to see he doesn't have enough HP. He doesn't want to get close enough to Wild Turtle, and now these stacks are coming down. The double binding onto them kept them in place for Wild Turtle to get enough HP back, and that is how Wild Turtle ends up picking up that four for three, or five for three, at the end of the day. So that's one of those fights where there could have been another kill picked up there, and that could have been Sneaky pushing up a little further. That could have been Sneaky retreating from Rainover afterwards, but you know, at the end of the day, it is that 10-0 for Immortals. Now, Let's hand it off to Dash, who's got an interview ready with Immortals Kill Leaders. Thank you very much, Zyrene. That's right, I'm here with Rainover and Wild Turtle of Victorious Immortals. And I don't know if you guys had the opportunity to see that clip as you were getting mic'd up there, but I think that that fight was a pretty perfect illustration of how, one, how bloody the game was, and two, how close it felt the entire time, even though I'm sure when you guys go back and watch it, you'll actually take note of the gold lead that you guys were able to secure yourself even through all these kill trades. Did it feel that close? I'm coming to you first, Wild Turtle, because the whole game just felt like every fight could have swung one way or the other. Uh, I think our, our team fights were pretty close, but I think we were in control for most of that game. I felt like every time we team fight, we were going to win. But somehow the team fights got super close. I think C uh, C9 team fought really well. Yeah, well, part of that was how big the Callista got. And a uh, big factor in that was, of course, the first blood that you guys secured before minions even show up to lane. But I actually want to come to you, Rainover, with the first blood question because by him securing the first blood over there, that means that that's the first game this split that you <laughs> don't get to be a part of first blood for your team. How does that feel, get, taking that statistic away from you? Oh, well, like, I'm not really playing like the game for first play, you know? Like if I just have a, like opportunity, then I just go for it. And then like usually it ends up getting first blood, but like everyone was laughing and everyone was like happy, super happy about like Turtle getting first blood because it's like really good start, you know? So like, I didn't feel any, but I just feel super happy. Absolutely, that didn't, that didn't uh, hinder your ability to have a good start either. I think very early on in the game, we saw four kills on both of you. So a lot of gold coming into your pockets. Uh, as this game developed though, uh, fight after fight after fight, we saw 10 kills at 9 minutes, 15 kills at, fifth, at 12 minutes, 36 kills at 20 minutes. You know, it was just, how do you as a team approach a game like that that seems to be operating at such a high speed that you almost can't think that quickly? How do you guys as a team figure out what your priorities are going to be when it just seems that every other second there's a fight starting? Um, I think... Like, if you see their picks and our picks, like, we really want to siege and to push out turrets when you have advantage. And then C9 is really good at uh, engaging fights. So basically, we had some advantage on early game, and then we wanted to push towers. But I think uh, me and Huni were, like, a bit positioning too aggressive mm. because I, like, it's not like we disrespect, but we just feel like if you play aggressive, then they have to, like, stay back. But they actually didn't stay back and then try to punish us. And then that ends up, like, we, like, having some kind of bad team fight because we usually have to peel back as much as we can. But um, I think it's just because we wanted to siege and that they wanted to engage. 
And then uh, it's actually when you have like Sagecom against Engagecom, like Engagecom should win team fight yeah. if uh, if Sagecom doesn't really play well. But I think like early game we didn't play really well on the team fight. But mid game uh, we had fed Kalistar, so we <coughs> kind of was focused on peeling. Yeah, it was kind of the clash of the two styles, yep. right? And so that's kind of how they met head to head. Speaking of the Kalista, who ended up with like. 13 kills in that game. You had the Maw, the Sterix. I mean, it just built into such a, a tanky uh, ADC frontliner, basically, for the team. I actually want to get your opinion, though, on, on Jin, because we got to see it come out this game. I know Sneaky's a big fan of it. It did, to some degree, impress with what it did. Of course, you guys got the first blood and a couple early kills, but what is your opinion of Jin as an ADC and where he kind of falls into the team? Um, I think Jin is pretty strong in, in terms of like poking and like cleaning up fights, but uh, I think like his laning is very weak because he's always prone to getting all in. And if you get all in as a uh, Jin, he can't really fight that well because his attack speed is like really low. Exactly. So, His mobility yeah. is, is essentially running out of running out of ammo. Yeah. He's like, now I can move. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's a little give and take there. Well, who knows? Maybe we'll get to see that opportunity again. That being said, you guys did leave it up. And so I want to return now to picks and bans because we finally saw a team target, Adrian, take out that Soraka Janna that he had played for the entirety of the split. So again, back to you in the bot lane. Did it feed... I, I kind of just want to get the team's opinion of the way that Cloud9 approached playing you because it was different from what any other team has tried against Immortals yet so far strategy-wise. Um, I think banning out Adrian is 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 cool, I guess, but like you can't really do anything even if you ban out Adrian because Adrian has a pretty big champion pool. Mm -hmm. But he or he's played a lot of like Soraka and Gen X, so I see why teams want to ban that, but I think Adrian can just play any champion. And especially with the Callista too, so it doesn't really matter. Right, it kind of feeds into what we were talking about in our pregame is how do you even approach going up against Immortals? Who do you ban out? We talked about, well, maybe you ban out the Adrian. Maybe you attack Rain over because you do make so many plays around the map. Um, being 10-0, I have to, and having had experience on an 18-0 team, I want to ask you, what is, what is your method of keeping the team on track and focused at improving and becoming better so that you don't you know rest on your laurels and get a, a you know a, a sneak game taken away from you mm, i think even this split uh like there was a lot of games that we were behind early game like even there was like 6k i think 5k gold lead that enemy had but i think we just have like the mindset me and huni especially had like mindset that like even though the game is behind we just assume that they're gonna make a mistake and then we just wait until they make a mistake, you know? And then when we're ahead, like, we just try to just ensure that uh, we're winning and then just try to not make mistakes. So I think if you just uh, focus on, like, being positive around the game, then I think it's, like, pretty... You can, like, make le less mis mistake, I guess, yeah. Well, it hasn't shown... There's been no moments of hesitation when you guys are behind. I think Freak and, and Jat mentioned in the cast that you guys looked very aggressive even on the losing end of some of these fights, and that's where those gold leads were coming out of uh, of this game is the constant pressure and, uh, and map movements that you guys have. Finally, Turtle, I want to come back to you, close us out here with... You know, a lot of people are looking at Cloud9 as the team that could beat you today with high back in the lineup. You squashed that notion. Uh, if there was anybody left, you know, on the docket to do it, I think most people would it would point towards TSM and CLG. Uh, your opinion after uh, TSM's performance today against CLG, y if they are able to reach kind of their full potential, do you think they can give you a run for their money? Uh, yeah, I guess. TSM. It's okay to say no. It's okay to say, ah, uh -uh, we're gonna I mean, squash I them. I mean, I guess TSM can <laughs> potentially take a game off us. It would just be a game I'm looking forward to, I guess. All right, yeah. good, that nice political answer, Wild Turtle. I was looking for you to be like, absolutely not. We will crush them. Exactly. <laughs> see, that's the face I want to see. Anyway, we're spreading the love. Oh, congratulations on the thank victory, you. the 10 0, and thank you for the interview. I'm being rude on Valentine's Day of all days. We're spreading the love here around the LCS studio with more tweets for your pro Valentines. This one comes from Spyron, maybe? Who's, uh, who's chosen high? Because I want to understand the magic. I think that we all do. I mean, uh, do you guys have any idea as to what it is that makes high such an effective shot caller? Oh, uh, I don't know. You just... Uh, he talks a lot, I guess. He's an outgoing person. I actually want to play a game with I, you know? You want to play with him? Yeah. You've never I, I even... Wanna see, I want to see what is he doing, you know? Because, like, if there's, like, voice check... Is it a voice check? 
I actually played with High before. He actually does talk a lot. Yeah, like High's. Oh, oh, the, really like my check at yeah, the end of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I saw it, like High always like have a good shot call or like good, like if if he actually ensure like opportunities, you know, even this game, like he just like if you have to go, he go for. It. He doesn't hesitate, you know. I think like players being like aggressive and then not being hesitant is actually a really good point, you know. So, yeah, I think it would be a real uh, maybe treat. this kind of thing like. Like engage when no one can engage this kind of thing I think maybe it's making him like important player absolutely I think everybody would appreciate being able to play a game with high at least for a moment see what it is like to be led by him anyway that's gonna do it for us on this game we've got liquid versus renegades right after the break so stay with us I'm a fucking Jin main. You're yeah. a fucking Jin man. You're actually done so. Balls flash Q. flash Q. If it's back Q, he kills him. He's got him. He's down. Balls solo kills Hootie. The push comes through for Sneaky. Here comes the curtain call. One on the Wild Turtle. Two on towards him. Now turns right over. Oh, and he gets him Adrian. from downtown. Oh, that's Hootie, Hootie, Hootie. Locks, locks, locks. The bunny, a bunny. Locks, 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 locks. Oh, shit. Can you get locks? Get locks, get locks, get locks, get locks. Get Inside their base, a stun on Paul Belter. Some damage dealt, but not even Jin can kill Immortals. Cloud9 could not stand up to the juggernaut that is Immortals. 